So let's continue on. Uh, example number two, another divided highway example. Uh, this one's a little bit different. This one has a five inch maximum milling requirement and a one inch milling requirement, one inch minimum milling requirement. This is where we're going to be basically taking an existing four lane road. We're going to be again widening and resurfacing, but we're widening to the inside. And we're going to be doing some substantial overbuild. So we're taking a four lane highway, going out to a six lane highway, widening it to the inside, also shifting the PGL point over and up. Um, concrete overbuilds 18 inches and 1.5 feet. So we need to mill. The existing pavement has to be limited to five inches of maximum, one inch of minimum. What we want to do is optimize our vertical alignment to fit between the five inch maximum milling and the one inch milling window. So we'll run the tool a couple times and then we'll create a best fit between that, that envelope or that window. So we do have another tool to perform best fit. And that's the one that's called best fit profile. It's been around for quite some time and I'll show you how that works in context with the overlay vertical adjustment tool in this particular um, situation. So now, working on a different project, we have this I-95 center line here, my geometry file. We have my corridor attached as a reference file, so that you see in my cross-sectional view. Corridor right now is just following along the projected existing ground PGL. So we just place this on the existing ground, project it over to here. So this is the PGL point currently. That's what you see down here in the profile model view. What we want to do is first set up our five inch maximum milling vertical. I'm going to go ahead and give that a name. I'm going to create the five inch max milling vertical. We'll set our station ranges. We'll set our backbone thickness. So remember, it was 18 inches, so 1.5 feet. So we're going to set a backbone thickness of 1.5. We'll set our milling mode to minimum overlay. Set the overlay thickness. Just going to set that for zero. And for the maximum milling, we're going to toggle that on. We're going to set that for the five inches of maximum milling. This is going to be the first option to be our five inch maximum milling. I'll select my points that I want it to look between. Select my horizontal range. It's going to look between my one edge of pavement, my other edge of pavement. Then for the existing ground range, I'm just going to set some fixed offsets here. These fixed offsets actually match those template points. So I probably could have just said match template points, but I just wanted to show that you can do some different things here. So I just picked fixed offsets. Have it examine all the cross section points between there. Set maximum vertical difference to zero. And then we'll have it go through, do some processing. So it's going to go through, analyze the corridor, analyze the values in the overlay vertical adjustment dialog. And it's going to create that new vertical for us. And you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty jaggedy looking. So you're going to want to smooth that out at some point. If your new vertical is going to be over here. So. I don't want that going all over the place like that. So now let's go ahead and apply that vertical to our corridor. So I'm going to jump over to the corridor once again. I would like to note that you can have the corridor in the same file. You can do all this in the same file if you like to do it that way. Um, I like to keep it separate because it slows down or it speeds up the processing time when it's in separate files. I don't want to have it all in one file. So, so I keep it separate. So here I'm going to go ahead and change my existing profile that it's following right now. Change it to the five inch, five inch maximum profile and you'll see the template raise up quite a bit based on those values that I use. And so you'll see the five inch maximum milling showing up there now. Okay, so that's our absolute 
most that we can mill down and maintain that 18 inches of overbuild. Okay, so that's the one scenario. That's gonna be the lower limit of our vertical adjustment that we're gonna create for our optimal vertical. Let's go and check out some of the other critical areas where we have some super elevation, some of the curved areas. You can see here how that's behaving. Our PGL point is going to be somewhere right there based on the super. We scroll through a couple sections, you can kind of see how it's working. I'm going to take a look at some other critical areas where we have super. And you can see how the milling is working over there, as well as how the uh, other parts of the template are behaving. Now let's go ahead and create the one inch milling vertical. One inch milling vertical is going to be higher than the five inch, obviously. We're going to come in here and create the one inch minimum milling. Then I'm going to use similar settings, use slightly different values. So our backbone thickness is still 18 inches or 1.5 feet. Set the minimum overlay mode, set the overlay thickness to zero. We'll say use maximum milling again. But this time we're going to key in 0.083. One inch, we'll select our same range points as we did before. It's going to be looking at this particular lane of pavement, that particular area of pavement. And then we'll go through and process this. And it's going to go ahead and create the other vertical directly above the five inch max vertical. So now we have a, a window where we can create the optimal or ideal vertical between. So we got this one inch milling, and we got this five inch max milling. Now what we want to do is create a best fit between there, optimize our vertical. Okay, so we can do that by utilizing the other best fit tool that we have. We have the define profile by best fit. I'm going to go ahead and select that and again. This one, you just have to pick one of these elements, one or the other. I'm going to pick the five inch milling one. Then I'm going to give it an upper envelope. So I'm going to go and key in a value of four inches or 0.33, because that would be the difference between those two, because we're at one inch, five inch, right? Or actually, yes, yeah, so four inches rather. Sorry. Yeah, so 0.33 is four inches. That's the difference between those two. So it's going to create the uh, best fit between those two verticals. Now at this point, what we can do, you can see that smoothed it out a little bit. Um, you can look at the properties of that and you can enter in some desirable K values or desirable curve lengths for sag and crest and also the minimum curve length as well to further smooth it out. That's what you need. So if I come in here and I enter in a value for desirable crest curve length, and desirable sag length. You can enter in some values based on your design criteria, whatever that may be. And as you can see, it's going through and adding those vertical curves to that geometry. So if you need to do something like that, you can just simply click on it, add in those values. Now, if you want to take this a step further and you want to really smooth this out really nice and get a little bit better answer, we could go back to that other tool, the other best fit tool, and run the other best fit tool on the newly created best fit vertical. All right, so now we can go and select this element here and further smooth it out if, if that's something you need to do. Okay. Some resurfacing projects, you don't need to do this. You can just use the existing ground and plotted every 25 feet or whatever, um, that's fine for, for some applications. But if you do need to do some smoothing, like in this case, then we could go ahead and, and do that with some of these other tools that we have available to us. You can see once again, it goes ahead, creates all those VPIs, creates appropriate vertical curves. And you can see that this option here is gonna be a little bit smoother than what we got using that other tool. Again, other tools basically uh, a little bit more segmented. 
So this one's giving you a little bit smoother option there. And if there's some areas that you need to make adjustments, once again, just use the dynamic text or graphical manipulators, table editor, whatever you need to do to uh, to make adjustments to the to the vertical. So, and if you need to start analyzing quantities, you know, between all these different profiles, again, just utilize the element component quantities or the component quantities tool to analyze all the different pavement um, calculations. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.